Hi guys, uh, quick product review time. Uh, we're looking at the RS14 multimeter. It recently became available on the RS components website. It's actually a very cheap multimeter coming in about 14 pounds. Uh, that's $25 uh, or about 380 Rand. Now what makes this multimeter so appealing is that it actually packs quite a lot of punch for such a small multimeter and it's quite feature complete. It even comes with a uh, temperature probe, a very nice set of uh, leads that we'll check out here. It basically has everything that you would require from an electronics multimeter. Ohms, volts, volts AC, uh, fairly hefty amp scale AC and DC, all the way down to micro amp scale. Now the RS14 really has a very clear and easily readable display. It's a 2000 count meter, but I think that's not too bad considering the price point. Now this meter fits really nicely in the hand. It's a, a nice and compact form factor. It's really, really solidly built. There's no creaking or crackling or anything like that. Uh, absolutely no flexing in the case. It's got a nice uh, tilting bell, uh, quite robust actually. No issues there. Yeah, no complaints. And it's actually got a really nicely rubberized selector switch. Now if I really had to nitpick, then maybe the selector switch could be slightly larger, but I guess in a form factor as small as this one, that's quite all right. The temperature probe is a standard K type temperature probe. It looks to be quite all right. The probes themselves, Cat 3, 1000 volt, Cat 4, 600 volt. They've got these little shrouds on. You can actually just take off like that. And then it's a CAT2 1000 volt probe. The leads themselves feel actually quite nice. They're not too long, so it fits with this form factor. Uh, they're not silicone coated, but uh, not uh, just PVC, very nicely rubberized. And interestingly enough, they come with these little protectors, possibly to just uh, protect the uh, sockets against the uh, corrosion. At the back there, you can see it takes a 10 amp fuse, also has a 200 milliamp fuse. We'll have a look at the manual just now. I seem to recall that it, uh, both of these fuses are ceramic fuses, a standard 9 volt battery. Access to the battery, just undo these two screws. Ooh, very nice. You know I like metal thread insert screws. Okay, and we're in. There we go, with your, uh, you can see the two fuses. Uh, a little bit on the small side, but hey, at least we've got access to both fuses without having to take or take apart the multimeter. 9 volt battery and a bit of a piece of foam there just to keep everything nice and snug. Standard 9 volt battery snap. So this is what it looks on, like on the inside. We've got the PTC here, some serious resistance. Uh, uh, MOV over there. Uh, you've got two input protection diodes over there. Uh, here's the uh, really hefty 10 amp current shunt. There's the 10 amp fuse, 200 milliamp fuse. And uh, yeah, the construction, the construction actually does look too bad. Uh, I see two trimmers uh, over there, so there's no closed case uh, calibration. Uh, two other trimmers over there. And of course the ubiquitous blob. And uh, just some uh, strain relief on the power lead. Not much else to see inside. So while there's no blast protection for these fuses, they fit fairly snugly in between these terminals. And uh, I will say that it's not often that you get uh, one of these really cheap multimeters that has uh, uh, the 10 amp uh, range that is also fused. There we have the resistor divider network. And that little blue component over there is no MOV, it's a spark gap. And that's quite likely the main control circuit, the display driver, as well as the multimeter chip. But what exactly it is, is anybody's guess. There we have the original OEM number, DT914. And that of course is uh, the multimeter made by CHEM or CEM. And it is also redistributed by uh, Hayes UK. The input sockets do not appear to be of the split variety. So that's a fairly solid uh, input socket there. So while it doesn't have any blast shielding around the fuses, it has a very deep uh, blast uh, ridge around the outer layer. And also on the inside here, you can see where that fits or slots right into the, uh, the bottom cover here. Hmm, no shielding on the back here, which is indeed a pity. I've got it hooked up to my 5 volt voltage reference here. And the, uh, uh, well, the battery clip I've got hooked up to my power supply. Uh, currently feeding at 9 volt DC, 
so let's see if we start winding down the input voltage uh, there we go eight and a half volts eight volts seven and a half volts seven volts okay now you saw the the battery uh, indicated appeared briefly there I'm going to continue winding down the voltage that's six and a half volts <laughs> it's a rather odd display the battery indicator is not completely uh, fully lit six volts five and a half volts five volts you can see the battery indicator now becoming more prominent four and a half volts four volts 3.5 volts 3 volts oh there we go yeah uh, you see at about 2 volts this uh, multimeter is still operating but the internal reference is starting to drift you can see it's no longer measuring the correct voltage and then there at about 1.5 volts it just cuts out and dies completely so in terms of uh, efficiency, uh, this uh, multimeter gets the thumbs up from me. Uh, it definitely will tap every last bit of energy from that 9 volt battery. Let's quickly have a look at the current consumption. Okay, so you can see about 2 milliamps when measuring 5 volts DC. On the AC scale, just slightly more, 2.7 milliamps. And let's just put the backlight on. So about 7 milliamps with the backlight on. So it means that you'll get at least 300 to 400 hours use out of a single 9 volt battery from this multimeter. That's actually quite good. One thing that you will really have to be careful with is not to uh, budge that little uh, trimmer part down there when replacing the battery so that these wires don't uh, bump up against that little trimmer part. But with some careful winding of these wires, that's easily avoided. And maybe just a very quick size comparison between my Fluke uh, 177 the RS14 and my Bryven uh, BM867 and uh, yes this is really really a fantastically compact little multimeter and from the side you can see it's just about as thick as the Fluke 177 and of course a lot thinner than the Bryven BM867 and let's just quickly have a look at the backlight yeah that's definitely not bad at all it's fairly uniform, slight bit of a hot spot on the side, but really no complaints. Okay, let's just do a quick voltage uh, measurement comparison here. Uh, you will note that uh, the uh, RS14 here uh, auto, uh, auto ranges down to, s to the millivolt scale on its own, whereas the Fluke does not. Uh, this is uh, quite is interesting in itself, but let's start winding it up. And uh, there you go. Oh, wait, hang on a sec. Let's just go down a little bit. There you can see, still within the 2000 count uh, range, well within its 0.5% uh, specification, though. And of course, the moment that we go over 2 volts, uh, the uh, RS14 will uh, lose one digit resolution. We can wind, uh, wind on, wind on, and up and up and up. Let's just stop there. Yep, that's actually quite good. And of course, as soon as we reach um, over 6,000 uh, or 6 volts, the fluke also drops one uh, decimal in res resolution. Yeah, that's actually quite good. Fairly spot on there. Not too bad. Still not too bad. Let's take it up to 20 volts. Oh, wait, hang on. My power supply can't go higher than 17.8 volts on the scale still within specification of the 0.5% uh, spec that's not too bad at all here I've got it hooked up to my 5 volt AC reference that's a perfect sine wave and that's not doing too badly let's just switch it to a square wave and as expected because this is not a true RMS multimeter, it measures 5.5 volts, but that's okay. Uh, most of the time when you're measuring AC voltages, they will be signed, and you definitely cannot expect uh, a multimeter at this price point to have a true RMS capability. And that's milliamps DC. Well, that's not bad at all. And that's on the 10 amp scale. Let's just wind up the current here.
Yeah, that's not bad at all. Very nice. I think that's well within specification. And it's actually quite nice to see that uh, when it scales below 2 amps, that it can switch to uh, a, f a higher resolution mode. And that even on the 10 amp scale, we have a low burden voltage. Uh, you can still you know read up to a single milliamp and let's just quickly have a look at the resistance scale here I'm gonna put a dead short on it now well that is actually quite fast that auto ranges really really quickly let's do that again that is very fast and I have here a couple of uh, high accuracy resistors let's quickly have a look at those that's a 10 kilo ohm Vichy 0.01% uh, resistor uh, that's well within spec and that's five kilo ohm and that is just spot on 100 kilo ohms just one count out and let's quickly have a look at the continuity tester that's maybe a little bit on the slow side so if you're testing for continuity by dragging these two tips uh, over a PC board uh, to see if there's a short somewhere this is probably not the multimeter that you'd want to use. Let's quickly have a look at the temperature accuracy here. Yeah? I've got all these meters dunked into the same uh, water container here. Yeah? And uh, as you can see, uh, this, uh, this meter has got two probes connected to it. Uh, both of them are K-type probes and they differ 0 0.1 degrees uh, centigrade or Celsius. Uh, this one's measuring uh, substantially different from this one and this other cheap ass little meter of mine is also measuring quite uh, quite some ways off now these two uh, meters do not have cold junction temperature comp compensation and uh, that means on a cold day like today uh, these meters are not compensating correctly for the junction temperature uh, where the uh, temperature plug probes plug into the meters themselves so they will be some some ways off um, you can see that if I pull this uh, probe out and heat it I'm just going to heat it with my finger here temperature does increase it's just that there's a slight offset because it's a cold day in the lab today so yes on the temperature scale it's not that accurate the specification says it will be plus minus three uh, percent but that looks to be off just a little bit more than that. All right, I've set my uh, soldering iron to 250 degrees uh, Celsius. Let's uh, see if we can get it up there. The specification says it can go up to 760 degrees Celsius. Let's see what it does with this heat source. Come on, you can do it. Oh well that's not too bad, that's not too bad at all. Let's just have a very quick look at the specification sheet here. Uh, this is the RS14 2000 count, it's got all those features of course and then right at the bottom here the uh, specifications. Uh, <laughs> I actually see it's not 0.5% it's 1% so it's a lot better accuracy than actually advertised there. AC voltage still better, everything's better uh, except maybe on the temperature scale it was slightly off because it's a cold day in the lab today. So in summary, I'm actually quite happy with this multimeter. It uh, offers fantastic value for money. There's uh, really no uh, problem that I can readily highlight. Uh, probably the only nitpicks that I would have is that the continuity tester is a little bit on the slow side. Um, the selector switch has a very nice and positive feel to it. And one thing that I did notice uh, what I uh, tested just now is that the milliamp scale has a slightly higher burden voltage than some of my other multimeters. Um, for example, uh, the Fluke 177 has a resistance of 1.8 ohms on the milliamp scale. This has 4.8 ohms on the milliamp scale. So about three times uh, uh, higher than, uh, than one of the other multimeters that I have here. But other than that, 
there's really nothing that I can fault this meter uh, on. It's uh, it really offers fantastic uh, value for money. Um, it even has the uh, not a min max function, just a max function, but that does allow you to switch it to a specific scale. Press the max button and then capture uh, the highest voltage that you've measured. So more or less something like a touch hold on the fluke. Auto ranging is actually quite fast. Uh, it doesn't have a separate uh, scale for millivolts, but that doesn't matter because of the auto raging uh, is so fast. Screen update rate is about three times a second, so uh, about normal for a multimeter in this class. This really offers, uh, I think I've said it before, really offers a very good value for money. Uh, <laughs> you know, a, a, a multimeter, especially an auto, ran auto ranging multimeter at that price point with uh, the functions that you see here is really quite rare. I think it's a good multimeter for that price. So guys, if you uh, like this uh, quick review, please uh, remember to give this video a nice thumbs up. If you would like to see more of these kinds of videos, uh, let me know. If you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.